<laughs> we did want to talk a bit more about the, the treble and the, the, um, the years afterwards, but well, actually, we'll do that. We'll come to the end with Ferguson and, and where that is now. Um, you know when you did your cruise ship in 98? Is that any kind of turning point for you? Like I heard, heard different things. I was reading somewhere that you, in that year, might have watched a few games on MUTV, old games, and saw yourself and been a bit unhappy. Because you seem to come back leaner, real peak. Well, I learned a lot when I was off for the year. Um, but, but, but the week in terms of um, when I'd done my cruise year, kind of summed up where I was really as a player. I was, listen, my career was going places, and I was at United, and things were going great. I think we played Liverpool and... Um, we played Liverpool on the, the Wednesday night. Leeds was on the Saturday. You know, about learning the game. But I think we're all students of the game. And, like, I love watching games. No, I'd, I'd watch any game. Right. So, but anyway, so the Wednesday night, we beat Liverpool 1-0. And um, on the Wednesday night, Old Trafford, always the case. My mentality was always after a game because I was quite an intense person after a game. And, and these, these were bad habits I was after getting into, particularly when I played League of Ireland, when I was at Forest. It was always a case of... Definitely go for a few pints after the game. Always, you know, win or lose, all that, hit the booze. I, I would, I'd always go for a few pints. That was my way of switching off. Other people would do other stuff. I'd go, no, I, I, listen, I'm going for a few pints. So went out on the Wednesday night. And when you go out after a game, it's going to be a late night because by the time you start drinking, it's 11 o'clock. And if you want to get steamed up, it's going to be three or four. <laughs> uh, and I'm serious. Jesus. And um, <laughs> so anyway, Wednesday night, I remember I left the hotel. I was at a drinking at this bar near Old Trafford. I'll try and fast forward the story. Um, Ended up having an argument with a fella. Um, <laughs> so the tour, would, we're playing would, Leeds. Would, we're playing would, Leeds on the. F would that happen often on the drink? No, 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 no Jesus, okay. no, no, okay. once a week. Um, <laughs> so, but, no, 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 very rare, Jesus. No, no, so we played Leeds on the Saturday morning. I remember we were losing, and Haaland had been irritating me for a number of years anyway. And I, I'd done something daft. I did. I don't think I deserved to snap my knee. Yeah. And because we used the subs, I had to go back on, and. Um, after the game, the physio, Dave Fever, was a brilliant physio, ex-Wigan uh, rugby league physio, so he knew all about cruciates and in the dressing room, my knee, I knew I was in trouble, you know, Jesus, you know, you, you, I didn't need to, a surgeon to tell me, and he says, yeah, you're in a bad way with the knee. I had an operation, I remember having an operation and had to let the knee settle down, done, had a cruciate operation about five, six weeks later, and then you are at a crossroads, you're 20, I think I would have been 28, and I'm going, so I had the operation, and I remember speaking to two surgeons, at United, for some reason, had two surgeons looking after me, which was brilliant. So they gave me the lecture at the hospital, you know, you're at a crossroads with your career, but if you do things properly, you should be all right, you know, you st still a number of years left in your career, sports science change, you've got a great physio, and I'm nodding my head going, yeah, you know, I'm, you know, I'm kind of, I, I love being fit anyway, and I, it's a setback, but I'll deal with And I went, I literally went out that night for a few pints on crutches, Yet the surgeons are telling me you're at a crossroads. I'm going, yeah, brilliant, yeah, brilliant. <laughs> yeah. I'll, do, I'll do everything to come back. Oh, but I'm going out tonight. And so there was elements. And then when you're out for the year and at the old training ground, the cliff, it's not like the modern gyms now. It's, there's no windows. And, you're just, and, you, and it's a lonely place yeah. when you're injured. But I kind of enjoy that determination to get back. But you do analyze your game. I wasn't necessarily going to watch United games, but I would look at other, other teams. I'd look at other midfielders. And obviously made a promise to myself, and that's when I said I'd better cut myself on, that when I come back, I would... And, and so, unfortunately, sometimes you need a bad injury, and yeah. I'm sure there's people here who played sports. You need a bad injury to appreciate the game a bit more, even though I always felt I loved the game, but maybe, just maybe, I was taking things for granted with my lifestyle and drinking after games and all this carry on. So when I came back from the cruise ship, I was quite... But I came back quite lean and, and, yeah. and ready to kickstart my career again. But then, on the other hand, then I went to extremes. You know, I looked towards the end of my career, even though I was 31, 32, to body fat levels. I was really gaunt looking. I took diets to the extremes. You know, a lot of sports people are extremists. And I went, I went then too far the other way. I remember I went to a, um, a detox in Milan. Do you know, the lads used to go to that gigs. And some of the French lads went to a detox place in Milan for four days. And I was like, oh, I'll try that, you know. And, <laughs> And they said for four days or five days, you go to four or five days, but you don't get fed in four or five days. I remember going, surely they'll give you a pizza in the evening or something. <laughs> and I went, and they don't feed you for four or five days. And I remember coming back, and my wife, and I was trying all these diets, fish, uh, pr no protein and cow. And I just remember, and I remember I was kind of cold all the time, and I kept getting dead legs. And it, it only takes your mother to tell you. My mother came over. I, again, I was about 30, 31. She went, what, what's happened to you? And I went, I'm, I'm kind of a fitness freak. No, you know, I'm just <laughs> eating salads all the time. 
And listen, when you play in the middle of the park in premiership games, salads will not do, you know. <laughs> Fucking trust me, you need a bit of red meat, you need proper... Get so from being a bit of a fool and being a, a boy on, out and about drinking, I then went too far extreme on the diet. Right. And eventually I caught myself on and, um, and what I try and do now, Christ, if I can with the food, not everything in modera um, moderation. It's a long answer, that wasn't it? Good, really? good, yeah, good. Yeah, but the cruise ship was a learning curve for me. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I, 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 <laughs> I think, to be fair, what Roy just said mirrored actually the, the Premier League. Sure. Because when we first came in, when we came into the first team, um, we would. The lads would go out after a game on a Wednesday and they'd go out after a game on a Saturday and sometimes even some go out on a Sunday. And as young lads, we'd been educated in sort of like a new type of way. This, was, this wasn't good for you, this wasn't right. The nutritionist was in there and Trevor came in. But you had this sort of like four or five players, six players left in the team that had been part of what had been the sort of culture under, you know, you remember when I first came into the team, Steve Bruce, Brian Robson, Paul, it was normal to do this, Pally. And we were sort of part of like the Premier League and it just changed completely. Wenger came in, nutritionists came in. And what Roy's just talked about there is actually the evolving nature between what was the essentially 70s and 80s and the Premier League, which became, if you like, a far more professional sports science space years. And, but what happened was that everybody then, you know, your, your body fat went down to 5 6%, which is just it's ridiculous. What were you? About seven and a half, eight. And I was 13 when I joined the club. But then the problem is, it became a point of how low can you get, how perfect can you become, how professional can you become. Um, we, were, we were already sort of, because we'd been, the boss had tried to change the culture generally, even when he first came to the club, you know, he tried to move it a little bit, he knew that it was changing. But to be fair, what Roy's career, to be fair, does is actually split that. He's lucky that he was able to change. Some players, you know, the particular ones that I played with in England, were not able to actually go from being a player that did that to a player that then became, if you like, a, a modern player, one that actually bought in and was open to sports science. Um, Sorry to interrupt, was that a hard change? Like, are you sitting there on a Wednesday going, oh. It was a bit, I no, I can, I, I'm better off to talk about this than him. Yeah. Because I witnessed it, I saw it. You know, I, I, I saw it in him in terms of everybody did in the change room, this massive big, this big moment of um, shift, complete shift. You know, not that he, was, he wasn't unprofessional before. He was basically doing what every other player was doing for sort of 25, 30 years. But then to actually just say, no, I'm going to absolutely change, it's a massive shift that in your life. And people who've made those sort of big changes and big shifts, um, I'd say it was 99, 2000, wasn't it? It was 99, 2000, this happened. And all of a sudden, his fitness, his, like I say, his body fat, but everyone else then responded to that. Okay. Because if the best player in the team and the most influential player is here again, getting to 5 6%, you can't be 12 you can't be nine, you've yeah. got to try and, and that's, that's essentially again a driving of standard and I think that was pushed right the way through and obviously sports science now has changed again but it was a, it was a, it was a massive shift. I generally believe we won the league five times in six years from 95 through to 2001. Obviously there's an element of talent but I think fitness was, abs I think we were fitter, we were more professional, you remember the Spice Boys of the time. You know, Neil Ruddock, Phil Babb, Jason McAteer, yeah. Fowler, John Scales, you know, all them lads, they loved a pint. <laughs> and do you know something? A pint of beer will cost you the league if you drink ten a night three times a week. <laughs> and the fact and the fact of the matter is, if you've got a team that's drinking six, seven pints three times a week or six, seven pints twice a week and you've got a team that are not drinking six, seven pints twice a week, forget talent, forget professionalism. Yeah. The difference is enormous in terms of how you feel. You know how you feel yourselves when you have a pint and you wake up the morning after and you go to work and it's like, it's fucking hard work. You, sure. you do that twice a week, and you, but you actually go in fresh and don't drink for a week and try and, and you feel, poof, I feel, and that's the relative is you eat better, you look after yourself more, and you'll be mentally stronger, you'll be physically better, and actually that can, that can be, if someone's even 10% more talented than you, you'll jump above them. Sure. 
And I genuinely believe that's what happened at United for a period of four or five years. And that's why Arsenal, to be fair, under, under Arsene Wenger, mm. were strong. And it can't be a coincidence that as that change of mindset's happening, you go and win the treble. And we could talk about that for an hour and the memorable games during the run-in. Is there one moment that, sort of 20 years on, that you still cherish of that time? Can you narrow it down? What, to that one season, you mean? Night to night? that run-in. I just think it was a combination of lots of stuff. There's never a lot of fans seem to remember certain games, a semi-final or the final. But sometimes we, I'd always go back and even through a league campaign, there might be a victory you might have had in March or something, and you just knew at the time this was a vital victory. Of course, again, people will remember maybe towards the finishing line. But I, there's no games really stand out for me where I go, yeah, that was a turning point. I think it was a combination of many years of hard work. You go back to 99, for example, but what you need in sport as well, and I, I think we're the first to admit as well, we can sit up all night and say, our talent, lads worked hard, but you need a bit of luck in this game. 